You know, it wasn't about Shane. It wasn't about the relationship. It was about what it triggered in me when things ended. I really am grateful. My life is so different than it was six months ago. It really is. And I, I feel that. I know that. This is beautiful Kay. She's 67 and met a guy who completely turned her life upside down. They went into a whirlwind romance and were long distance for about two months. And then when she asked for what she perceived to be a healthy amount of communication, he pulled away and just asked to be friends. This triggered in her deep abandonment wounds that had been dormant but had been subtly affecting her and her whole life and were now causing her to act obsessively about him. I couldn't believe how it just put me into this tailspin of dark panicked. I didn't know who I was. I was like stalking him on Facebook and seeing him pop up here and there. And like, it was terrible. I mean, I really was like, who are you? I obsessed with it. I was really depressed. I was ashamed of myself for feeling that way. Now Kay had been on a healing journey for quite a while and had tried a bunch of things to help her but hadn't been getting anywhere. I tried all these different programs to get myself through it with um, different meditations, different neurological pathway changing them. But I, it just was, every time I hiked with the dogs, every time I woke up, it was just this obsessive thinking of, of shame. And I had already done like five or six months of healing work. So I was even more of a basket case when it, <laughs> when it first took place. But even after five or six months of trying to heal myself, I was still, whew, I just, yeah, I really didn't know who I was. I was frantic. I didn't, I need, I know I needed help because I really thought I had done work for years in healing myself. Kay had been doing what's called top-down healing work, talk therapy, journaling, reading, writing, meditating, anything up here, including reliving childhood memories that can magnify the trauma even more. But attachment trauma lives in the body. It can't be healed by top-down therapies, which is why so many people fail to heal their core wounds. I don't want to go back and relive all of the painful childhood stuff. You know, I've done EMDR and relived that. I just want to move forward. And you were like, that's how I do things. So we started working together inside Heal Your Heart School, where we focus on simple, practical tools that allow you to access and heal the core of the trauma where it lies in the body. And fast forward six months of us working together and she accidentally bumped into Shane one day. And the difference for her was unbelievable. I, I saw Shane, oh gosh, it was in October on a road trip. I didn't know I was going to, but I did. And I was able to spend a couple of days hanging out with him and not have that longing. I saw him for who he was. He wasn't up on this pedestal anymore. Um, and I'm really grateful for that because anytime, you know, like he'd pop up on Facebook, I'd be like, ugh. And now it's just like, he is who he is and he has his struggles too. And I don't need to be angry with him, but I'm definitely not, you know, it just doesn't trigger anything anymore. And I'm really grateful for that. Now, because these core wounds affect all of our relationships, her children, particularly her daughter, also noticed a difference. Have your kids noticed a shift or change in you? I think so. I think like um my daughter has said things my two sons haven't really said anything but i feel there's a difference especially with my middle child he's my first son that i've had more of a wanting him to like me wanting him to show me that I've been a good mom, even though sometimes I've messed up. He struggled with addiction and stuff. And so that's been a harder relationship. And we're just, we're, we're, he's texting me more and calling me more. And when I go see him, he's only in a less than an hour away, staying in my little house about an hour away. And I'll go up there and he's like, well, you know, 
he'll want to hang out more. And I'm just allowing myself just to be me and talk to him more instead of like, which he can feel and sense when I'm trying to trying too hard. You know, everybody can sense that. So, but my daughter has definitely, she's like, wow, you know, she's seen me make more boundaries that are healthy for me. And, um, and I'm really grateful that, that that's happening, you know, because I think I put it on one of your posts. There's a ripple effect when we as women, if, and if we're mothers start to change ourselves, it does ripple out to our other, especially family relationships, you know, another thing that my daughter has noticed, which she's also been a good support is like, if I have said, if I need to say no, or I'm not going to do something that I think somebody else wants me to, I'm always like defending myself and giving reasons why. And it's like, no, all I have to do is say, hmm, I can't, or I'm really not interested, or I don't have to follow with this because blah, 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 you know. So that's been really nice too, just to be okay with just keeping it simple. Now, how did she actually do it? Let's remember, Kay's core wound that was triggered when Shane pulled away was created by subtle attachment trauma from Kay's earliest relationships, her caregivers, before she could even talk, which is why talk therapy doesn't work to heal this wound. Let's hear it in Kay's words. It isn't just talk therapy. It isn't just read and journal and reflect and, but it's, it's the somatic bodily stuff it's the getting in touch with those parts of ourselves in a real way it's not like a foreign it's it brings it so it's real and trusting our body when we feel something really pay attention to that and what is going on there now this isn't just any body work like breath work or somatic experiencing these are specific immersions designed to contact the core abandonment energy that keeps these patterns in play that allowed Kay to contact parts of herself that were acting from this wound and heal them and after doing your classes you immersions, um, getting more in touch with myself and what was going on with me, paying attention to how my body would respond to things um, and starting to work with myself and loving on myself was definitely the key to the healing. There's so many different ways that you help us get in touch with ourselves because it is very individual, you know? It's like learning styles. Some people are auditory, some people are visual, some people are kinesthetic, and you touch all of it. So I feel like that's that's the whole, the gamut of ways that we can heal. I asked Kay, now that she's found the key to healing, how does she feel about finding love again at 67? And in terms yeah. of now, like looking forward to the future and the potential of like a romantic partner, what's the difference there between where you were before to now? So where I was before right away after our breakup was I was grasping. I, I wanted to have that love. I wanted to have a relationship and experience that. And in, after working with you, I realized that love is the relationship that I have with myself. And I love loving myself. That's the romance I want. And that's what I feel like I'm experiencing now. And then there was that avoidant time where it's like, I don't want a relationship. I don't need a man. I don't, I'm not doing this to have a relationship. It's not out there anyway, you know. And now I'm like, I'm open to whatever. And if it happens, great. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And, you know, it would be nice to have companionship, but 
like I said, I have my two black labs and I love being by myself too. I really do. Was there anything else that you wanted to add to say, like if you were to say to someone, you know, if you're in the place that I was in, you know, this is why I would really recommend it. Yeah, it's, I really would recommend it. I, to, you know, if I have friends that are struggling or, you know, to women who are on the edge, should I, shouldn't I, I was, I was on that. I don't know, but I, we're all worth that investment. And it is life changing. It is a solid, heartfelt program that you offer us. And um, and like I said before, it's it's lifelong. And life does throw us curveballs throughout the time. And whether I want to jump in, you know, in a year or two, if I haven't for a while just to see how things are going because I love you and I want to, or if I'm going through a hard time, I know I can, you know, and I'm so grateful for that. You know, it's definitely been worth every penny. You know, I definitely was like, can I really afford this? And I was like, I can't afford not to do this. The rest of my life is worth it. This is not who I want to be. And I need to know how to, get over this so (laughs) i you know we talked again and i was like yeah i'm worth this and i'm gonna sign up and i'm so glad i did so glad we are getting testimonials like this every week inside heal your heart school so if you're stuck in a cycle of attracting toxic relationship dynamics again and again you've never had a healthy relationship and you have abandonment issues and core wounds that are affecting your relationships that you just haven't been able to heal i invite you to sign up for a discovery call with me to see if we're a fit to work together you can book a call in the link below and after you book a call i'm going to ask you to watch my webinar the proven three steps to self-love after a toxic relationship ends it goes for one hour and it gives you the entire process that Kay went through in heal your heart school to heal these wounds you'll be taken through that before our call if you have any comments or questions about Kay's testimonial and her story please comment below I would love to hear from you and please click this like button just to help the channel out hit the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed yet and here are some next step videos for you to watch so you can move one step closer to having the beautiful relationship with yourself like Kay now has. Uh, And for now, I'll see you in the next video.